Hello, in this video we're going to solve the isogram problem, so I'm going to click on this link right here, and then copy and paste this text to download the isogram problem files. Here's the template file, we'll fill this in to solve this, and here's the unit tests that will check our code. So we can tell from here that it's expecting us to have isogram.py, and inside that will be this is isogram, which is going to be a function. You can see right here, it gets called and passed a single string argument. And from these assert true and assert false calls, we can tell that it's expecting is isogram to return true or false. So let's take a look at some of these some of these test cases. So isogram, the word is true. This is an isogram. The blank string is also considered to be an isogram. However, the word 11, which repeats the letter E, is not an isogram. So it's expecting this to be false. So they have some other cases that are pretty interesting right here. Look at alphabet. This has A twice, but depending on how we implement this, this might be returned as true if we check and don't consider that capital A is the same letter as lowercase a. So we're going to have to check for the case sensitivity right there. And some of these also have non-letter characters like the dash right here or this space. We can tell from this that it considers these words or these phrases rather to be isograms. So the dashes and spaces and non-letter characters don't affect anything. So let's go to isogram.py. Let's see, they're going to be passing us one string argument. I'm going to call it word, even though technically it could also be a phrase. Um, but we just need to return true or false depending on wor if word is an isogram or not. So first thing we need to do is we need to have some sort of data structure that will remember all the letters uh, inside this word. So create a data structure that remembers all the letters. And next we're going to need a loop to iterate over all the characters in Word. We're going to need to remember each character. And if we've seen a character before, return false. Otherwise at the end of the loop, we'll just return true. So a few things that we should check out first before we attempt to solve this. I'm going to hit Control B. That data structure that we're going to solve, we could use a dictionary for that. See, I have spam equals a blank dictionary right here. We can start adding some key value pairs right here. Now, a dictionary would be nice, but we really only need the key part of this. We wouldn't have any values at all. We just need to add a letter to the dictionary if we've found it, and then we can check uh, if we found a new letter that already exists in our dictionary, then we know we've seen that letter before so that we would have to return false. However, because we don't really need the values for the key value pairs, we just really need the key part so we can use instead a set, which is sort of the same thing as a dictionary except it doesn't have a value part. So instead of using this square bracket syntax, we can call its add method and start adding values to the set. And you can see the syntax looks very similar to a dictionary. It has the curly braces, it just doesn't have the colon and the value. So there's no key value pairs, there's just items inside the set. And like a dictionary, these items don't have any specified order. Python just picks one when we have to display it right here. So really the set A and B is considered to be the same thing as the set B and A because they have the same values. Now the third option that we could have is using a list. You might think that's the first thing that you would want to try. You could append this A value here and a B value. We could also check that. The nice thing about a set though is that since we don't really need the order information, then we don't really have to use a list right here. And in fact, if the set was large enough, it would actually be a lot faster to, pull, uh, to check if a set has a value in it, then a list. Next, we also need to figure out some sort of way of checking if a string contains any non-letter characters, if it contains letters or not. So let's go ahead and just Google for this. So I'm just going to Google for Python, check if a string is a letter or not. And there's a Stack Overflow answer. 
which points us to this isAlpha method. We can play around with this inside of the interactive shell. So if I call isAlpha on the string abc, you can see it returns true, but isAlpha on some non-letter string is going to return false. So this is going to be useful for those test cases that have the dash or the space, because dashes and spaces shouldn't factor into our algorithm at all. Also, let's go back to our set, which contains the a and b. Now we can check that the lowercase a is inside this by just using the in keyword. So a does exist inside of the bacon set, but x does not. Now the problem is, capital A in bacon is going to return false. That's because this capital A and lowercase a are considered to be two different values. So we're going to have to also convert all of the values into lowercase or all values to uppercase before we insert it into bacon. So try to solve this problem on your own, and in the next video I'll show you my solution.